Hi traders, BHVN is down 1.8% and I would really like to short it once it comes down under this support area. Now what you don't see here is the daily. Stock came down very strong yesterday and initially that was a pullback day which did not work out. So I'm going to show you the daily a bit later. I don't want to miss this trade. If it comes down under 43.95 I want to short it. And the reason I want to short it under 95 is because it was supported at 43 and I want to make sure that it's coming down and I need a few more cents just to be on the safe side once it comes down. So I think we're going to see big volume spike. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 95, under, come on now. Click that button. I'm in. I'm short. Well, came down rather quick under 95. My execution is 85. Well, I, I need approximately 30 cents, but 30 cents should be counted from 95, meaning my target should be around 40 to 65, and my stop should be at around 40 to 20, 25 or so, somewhere around here. So I'm just waiting for it to come down now. And once it started moving down, and look at the volume bar here, which is very important because it shows that I'm not the only one who noticed it. There's a lot of people who shorted it right under this support over here. So this volume bar means that it's coming down and it's noticed to move down and therefore more people are probably going to join. And again, my target should be at around 40 to 65. So I'm not expecting a great trade. And I took just 1,000 shares, which is for me a relatively small size, a quarter size. I'm green for the day, not much, a bit over $1,000 or so. I had a rough start today, started with two losing trades, managed to move slowly into green. And I'm not trying to risk here more than a few hundred dollars, I want to stay over $1,000 profit. So I'll just be waiting, watching the buyers and the sellers at all time. Now it's very important to notice the buyers and the sellers, especially on idle moments like that one right now. Like, okay, we're coming down, this is great. Look at the buyers at 76, look at the sellers at 83. Also need to watch the time and sell. Who's buying? Who's selling? You see the last trade was at 87, now 85. That means it's going up. Now 90. So that means that the buyers are aggressive. They're buying at the ask. When the buyers are buying at the ask, the only way you can see that is by looking at the time and sale right over here. If you don't look at the time and sale, you don't know where the pressure is. Now if you watch the level 2, you see that the sellers came down 1 cent to 89. They were at 90 earlier. Now where's the next trade? Next trade is 85 in the middle. Sellers came down another cent, 88. That means sellers pressure. It means that there still are some sellers out there. Look at them now coming down to 86. So again, watch the buyers right here on the bid side. Watch the sellers and watch the time and sale because it lets you know where the pressure is. You see, last trades, 77, now they're moving to the bid side, which is a bit dangerous, coming back to the ask side. Again, watch the time and sell, and you could have seen that there was a bit of a pressure to the upside, and now it's spiked up again. So, a small spike up, nothing to be concerned, but the stock is trending lower, it looks good, and I'm waiting for a better result. We're slowly coming lower, and again, my target is at 42. 65, again looking at the pressure, sellers just came to 85, good, buyers at 77, 75, 71, look at the sellers, but here we go, at my target, touched my target, that was looking good for a second there, was very, very close to my target, and ooh, look at this spike, never move out on a spike, never ever move out on a spike, just don't dare moving out on a spike, look at this, spike now. That's a 40 cent spike right here. The only thing you can do is add. I'm about to add to my short. I will add 1,000 shares right now. Added 1,000 shares. Never move out on the spike and if at all, add. Now I'm not adding to a losing trade. I'm adding to a losing trade which was because of a spike. 
Now, spikes do not last long. And I bet you this stock is going to come down. Just never move out when you see anything like that. It should move, move down now because whenever you see a spike like that, when a stock is trending lower, there's no reason for it to move up. I mean, the only reason that could be is if it has some kind of an intraday news. If it has some kind of intraday news, then it could move up. Intraday news would not look like that. Intraday news would look like a spike of a few dollars up. So I really am not that worried, a bit worried, because I just moved to red territory. But I shouldn't be worried. I added to my trade because a spike like that usually is being caused by fat fingers. Fat fingers are people who are just buying or selling large quantities with a click of a button that they shouldn't have done. So we call them fat fingers. They just click the button by mistake or something. Or they just don't know much about trading. That happens quite a lot. So it moved up. The volume was relatively high. And again, it should come down. Now, now that I have this uh, recent new high, I could have a better stop than I could earlier. That's my new higher low. That's my new higher low. But I wouldn't stick to that. I would go a little bit higher. 43.15 looks like a decent stop for me. Actually, I would use one cent above 43.15 because I want to be a bit over this red line that you're seeing there, which is the view up. So. I would like to stop it if it moves over 43.15. That would be my stop. So I would, if it moves over, have a small losing trade on my second trade, the one I added, and a relatively bigger one for my first trade. Now, of course, I don't want to see it moving higher, but it looks a bit dangerous right now. I'm getting ready to move out just in case it does. But I still trust it to come down. And again, the stock is trending lower, just that I just need to have my stop somewhere. So let's just wait for recovery here, and hopefully it will come down. So far it's moving a bit up. Here comes a 15, a cent over, I will be away. Now again, now, take a good, good look at the number of the buyers, number of the sellers. Try to imagine if there's a chance it's gonna move over 15. There's quite a lot of sellers at 15, I mean, not a lot of sellers. You can see one, four, one. That's only 600 shares. But compared to the number of buyers, that's a bit more. And watch the number of sellers getting a bit higher now. You see a bit more, 900 shares now on the sale. Two means 200. Five means 500. Watch the numbers here. And again, watch the number of buyers. 200 at 11, and now we came down. So when you ha whenever you have more sellers than buyers, it's more likely for the stock to come down. Now look at the number of sellers at 15. You could have seen that there were quite a lot, and therefore it came down to 0 0.8. 14 now. Now the sellers who were at 15, that's a good sign, a very good sign. The sellers who were at 15 now just came to 14. So they're chasing the price down a bit, competing among themselves. They could have seen that there were a lot of sellers at 15, so they came down to 14. Now they moved to 12, now they moved to 11, uh, and now they moved to 8. And again, I don't know what's going to happen now, but certainly the view up area, this red line that you're seeing there, was very, very helpful. Hopefully, I picked the right stop point again 43.15 and now I hope it's going to come down and I do have some added quantity so from a trade which is relatively not very dangerous for me this became a trade that could get me to zero today I hope it's going to make it and good, look at the buyers now coming down under 43. That's a g great sign. I just need to sell us under 43 and I just got that. Now I'm pretty sure it's going to come down to where I once was and maybe even more. Let's wait and see. We just came back to the recent low and this should be the breakdown point. Look at the buyers now again and the sellers and we're coming down. Just moved under 60. Buyers under 60, sellers move to 62. This should be the breakdown point. This should be it. This should be it. Come on, baby. Come on now. Come down. Here we go. Here we go. 50s. I'm a bit afraid of the 50, 42, 50, because that's a semi-whole number. I would expect more buyers. Look at the number of buyers. 
probably going to have some more buyers at point 50. Right now, 51. Here comes 50. Not much. No, we're under. That's great. It could move now. Getting ready to cover. I'm going to cover 1,800 shares of my 2,000 shares. Look at the sellers coming down to 45. Buyers at 38. This is so nice. Sellers at 39. 35. Any sign of a pullback, I'm going to click that button. Watch the seller side, 35. If they're going to move up, I will click that button. Okay, 39. A small move up. I'm still holding. Hopefully, it's going to come down. No. Coming back to 39. Holding, 39. It moves a cent over 40. I'll click the button. 39. Buyers at 29. It's a bit spready. Getting ready to cover 1,800 shares. Now, moved over 40, 45. Click that button, and I have an 1,800 shares partial. That was a beautiful move. Now, what should you take away from this video? Never move out on spikes. Never move out on spikes. You short a stock that is coming down. You short a stock with momentum, with trend. Stay with the trend. A spike up shouldn't take you away. The difference between novice traders to experienced traders is novice traders would move out. They would have a, an unpleasant loser. Experienced traders would remain. Keep the trade. Sometimes, just like what happened today, Add a bit more. So the stock was just continuing to come down with the trend. Looked lovely. Hasn't done anything wrong. Wrong Was just downtrending. It's all the case of how many shares you have. If you're too concerned to hold on for the pullback for the spike in this case. Or you can live through pullbacks and spikes just like what happened. And again, never move out on spikes. I can't remember how many times I pointed this out in my videos talked many times about it so here comes another time please remember that when the stock is going your way and spikes up or down against your direction you could add but never move out never ever move out that was an amazing trade in bhvn and i hope that was a lesson that you could have learned from so I mentioned earlier that uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the daily of BHVN because it was a big part of my decision making and here it is now. Take a look at that. BHVN dropped down yesterday uh, from around $57 to $40. And today is the second day. And usually when a stock is coming on the second day after a breakdown day, it does not continue up. If it wants to continue up, this may happen on the third day or the fourth day. Of course, sometimes it happens on the second day, but not very likely. Therefore, today, when I watched BAVN intraday, I liked the short, but it didn't look so amazing to me. I have to acknowledge that. But when I watched the daily and the fact that it came down so strong, yesterday made me believe that since this is the second day then it's very very likely to continue down now you just need to know these statistics if it's a second day it usually continues to come down on the third day i could have suspected that it may move higher on the fourth day probably even more but usually you don't go long stocks like that. Some people would buy it because they would average down their losses. This would be long time investors and so on, not us traders. So they may buy it, they may go long, but they wouldn't last for long because the fear is much greater than the greed. So again, look at the intraday. It was a very, very nice breakdown formation right over there that looked okay to me, small size, relatively small size, but I made my decision mainly because of the daily. The daily looks amazing and I knew that it was more likely for it to come down. And stock IPO just opened up. That's a symbol, stock. Now, when we trade in IPOs, let me refresh the rules. If you didn't see my previous videos about IPOs, then here comes the rules. Rules are very important. First, you need to see the stock is over the IPO price. In this case, 60% up. Look at the volumes too. The volumes over 1 million shares. These are two very important rules. You want to see the stock up over the IPO price, usually over 5%. This one's up almost 60% right now. And you want to see the volume over 1 million shares. And you've got 1.2 million shares. So 
Uh, stock IPO is a valid trade and we're going to take it according to the third rule and the third rule means that it needs to go over the five minute high. Now the high right now as you can see here is 28.92 so I'm already posting it right now in my trading room for a long over 28.92 assuming it's not going to happen before the fifth candle although if it's going to happen on the fourth I may take the trade. It's getting uh, close to the highs, holding near the highs, and I really, really hope it's not going to go through before the fifth candle. Here comes a fall, so this may become a valid trade now if it moves over. I'm getting ready to go long. There's a bit of an issue with the $29, because $29 is a whole number, and I do hope we're not going to see a lot of uh, sellers over there. I'm going to go long. Um, I'm thinking about 1,000 shares here. It looks good. Now it's getting to be the end of the fourth minute candle right now. So I may want to buy some more. Okay, 2,000 shares about to go long. Here we go now. Just moved over the highs. Did not yet move over 29. And here we go. Moved over 29. Beautiful move. Now I just needed to continue. I just needed to continue. Huge number of buyers. Watch the number of buyers at 29. That looks great. I'm looking for 60 cents approximately, 70 cents maybe. Okay. Oh. It's spiking a bit. It's spiking a bit. Should have a stop somewhere. under 28.25 but if it's gonna spike down oh, oh 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 look at this spike down never move out on a spike that happened too quick oh my goodness 26 dollars <laughs> oh this is crazy I'm down like three points now six thousand dollars down goodness erasing all my profits today and more Never move out on a spike. Never ever move out on a spike. Traders never move out on a spike. I don't care that it spiked down. I have to hold on. I don't add to an IPO just like I did earlier with BHVN because you never know what's coming out with IPOs. They are too crazy. But look at this bottoming tail. It's looking much, much better now. It's almost back to my initial number, to my entry number. Okay. That was a huge spike down. Came all the way down almost to $26. And again, I don't know how many people erased their accounts today by trading this stock. So many people blew up their account today. I bet you many of you guys lost a lot of money today in stock IPO. There's a lot of people who are trading IPOs and I'm one of them. Love to trade IPOs. But again, never move out on a spike. That's the second time it happens to me today and hopefully my traders, the one who are listening to me in my live trading room and you're very welcome to join too. You just need to click on the link right over here for a free 14 day trial or go to our YouTube channel where it's totally free all the time and you don't have to sign up for anything. But look at the way it's coming back up right now. Oh beautiful. Almost back to my entry point. Need another 30 cents or so. Here we go. Come on, baby. So again, you know, we're trading together. And I know I helped a lot of people today with BHVN trade when it spiked up when I was short, of course. And I added, I've asked a few of my traders and um, the, the answer was very clear. It helped quite a lot of them not to move out when BHVN spiked, spiked up. Now stock just spiked down dramatically. Here we go back to my entry point. Spike down dramatically and I guess a lot of people just got scared away and clicked that button when it was down. But when you have a quick move, it doesn't matter if you had your stop right there. And again, never move out on a hard stop. A hard stop would have moved me out where I planned to move out. And I don't know if this is going to become a winner or not because it's getting back to the highs. It looks good right now. But let him tell you this. When you have hard stops, 
it takes you out where it shouldn't take you out, especially on spikes, because you're not supposed to move out on spikes. Spikes are usually just fat fingers selling a lot of quantity, and they usually, and it usually turns, it, the stock usually turns back. Here we go, back to 29 and over. Cool trade. I'm getting ready for my partial. I was planning it around the 60 mark originally, and I still have the same same target and I hope this time it's going to make it just move to a new high and again don't use hard stops use mental stops and mental stops will help you from getting out on spikes here we go at my target clicking the button right now got my partial left 200 shares that's a beautiful trade and again traders never move out on a spike that's the second time it happened today and I'm so glad that I'm keeping to my rules and again, you should too, and hopefully this is now becoming something a little bit more solid after you see the BHVN trade. And now this one, this is just looking beautiful. Just save that trade from a $6,000 loser. I have a very nice winner here. And here's how my account looks like today. Uh, I had two trades in Adobe. First one was a loser. And the second one moved me into small green territory. That's $570 right there. And the second loser I had today was YY down $1,400. So I started my day with two losers in YY and in Adobe. And I thought about quitting and then came Fiverr. I had two trades in Fiverr. These were two very, very nice trades, but relatively small size. Didn't want to take much of a risk. Uh, BHVN, you've seen this trade, ended up at a nice profit of $971. And uh, stock IP, relatively small winner and uh, I'm out of it it came down just recently and uh, that's it for my day so total result $2,800 and uh, a very very nice day and it all happened because I kept to my rules thank you for watching our video before you go we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14-day trial Traded has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004 and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.